Oil is a very special material. It's something that uh, we're blessed with an enormous amount of, and we've used it in very productive ways to move the civilization along dramatically, particularly during the last century. The hydrocarbon molecules that exist in oil are just marvelous. They're capable of providing us uh, fuel for transportation, pharmaceuticals, fertilizers, feedstocks for plastic. They're just remarkable materials. And the problem is that at some point we're going to reach maximum oil production, which is called the peak. And of course, when that occurs, then we're, we're really in a pickle. And the question is, what are we going to do about it? Some people suggest that we conserve our way out. We analyze that. You simply can't do it. Conservation it will be an important part of new directions, but conservation alone will not solve the problem. So we have to uh, find alternate hydrocarbons until we can phase over to a different kind of a future, a more sustainable future. This is not a pleasant subject. It's an extraordinarily unpleasant subject. People tend to not want to deal with very unpleasant subjects. The other thing is that the subject is incredibly complicated, and people do not understand energy. They simply do not understand the difference between liquid fuels and windmills, between nuclear power and tractors. They simply don't really understand how things work. I don't mean that as a criticism. It just is part of the problem of education that's going to have to go along with people realizing the severity of the problem and what the important answers and the useful answers are likely to be. I don't think there's any way out. I think we've got to build things and do things on a scale that has never been done before. It has to be done worldwide. What it does to economies in the process is open to question. It's not difficult to come up with some pretty dire predictions, but that's up to economists and, and people to take a serious look. As you may know, there was an exercise uh, done here in Washington earlier this year called Oil Shockwave. The idea was to look at what terrorism might do in terms of interrupting oil flow. They did some computer simulations. They hypothesized that terrorism cut 4% of world oil production and they considered what that would do to the United States economy. 4% is not a big number. What they determined was that oil prices would jump to over $160 a barrel, and that the U.S. economy would go into recession, and there would be millions of jobs lost. And that's just with a 4% reduction. And we're talking about numbers that are much, much bigger than that. These are difficult problems to analyze. It isn't difficult in analyzing them, though, to see dire consequences, even with some of the most optimistic assumptions that somebody can make. With respect to starting mitigation, how does the cost of starting too soon compare to the cost of starting too late? If uh, the peaking of world oil production occurs any time in the next 20 years, which I think is uh, quite likely, then there is no such thing as starting too soon. And if we start too late, uh, then we're in for dire economic changes certainly a recession, and it could be much worse than that. In the report, you had talked about the social cost of starting too soon. I found that quite interesting when you compare that to the actual costs that would be incurred if we started too late. I think that the cost situation is skewed uh, to being too late, and I think that really fits with what both the optimists and the pessimists are saying. The reason for that is that we're unlikely to step quickly into a crash program. We're more likely to begin to scale up slowly. And if that's the case, that puts off being in a sound position for a long, long time. It's a world that is less dependent on liquid fuels is a good one. And eventually that's what's going to have to happen, simply because we are depleting the liquid fuels that are available or are going to be available from coal or shale or other sources. The problem is that we have an enormous infrastructure that's dependent on liquid fuels now. We all have our cars and get our food from trucks and trains and uh, we fly around in airplanes and, uh, and so forth. And to change that infrastructure in a dramatic way is going to take a great deal of time. 
because that equipment has long lifetimes and it's going to cost a lot of money. I don't think anybody really knows because we're entering into, we would be entering into a situation where anything that we say in advance is strictly speculation. Some of the things that are reasonably certain is that uh, oil will become scarce and so its price will go up, go up dramatically. Uh, that will mean dramatically higher costs to consumers, and dramatically higher costs to consumers is going to have an increasing impact on the economy. And the problem is that it's very hard to see any way that that can turn out in a painless manner. Uh, every person that I know that thinks about it in a reasonable way thinks in terms of very high prices for fuel and all the places that we use fuel in the economy comes to very negative conclusions. What do you think about the transportation demand restraint strategies that are outlined in the IEA report, Saving Oil in a Hurry, such as carpooling, telecommuting, rationing, etc.? I think they've identified a number of things that are possible and reasonable, but the problem is, just like any of the mitigation opportunities that we have, they're unlikely to be implemented until people are feeling pain. Our conclusion is that the world would have to take crash program action on a broad scale with basically everything that's available commercially or near commercially and would have to start 20 years before the problem strikes in order to be able to avoid dire economic consequences for the world. Now, the problem, of course, is that there are a number of people who feel that peak oil may occur in five or 10 years. And if that's the case, we're already too late for the relatively uh, safe scenario of 20 years advanced initiation of the project.